Our first stop on a month-long tour of random bits of Europe that we wanted to go to, trademark, was Paris. I loaded up my friend Richie, future internet star based on this, and myself, and hopped on the short EasyJet flight to Charles de Gaulle Airport. I've been to Paris many times before, and actually before I went this time I was a little blasé about going again. There always seems to be so much to see in the world, and so much to do, that returning to a place, especially somewhere as near to the UK as Paris, can seem like a wasted opportunity. These thoughts aside, we soon got into the swing of things, heading up to the Sacre Coeur, which was near our hostel, and enjoying the view, before treating ourselves to a meal in a restaurant with the weirdest decor. I mean, look at it. It's like... Bay Boop vomited on a deck chair. It's ridiculous. Food was good, though. Our hostel was also near the Moulin Rouge, which gives you an idea of how nice the area was, which we went to look at. Just because... I'd seen that film, and it's famous? As you can see, it was well worth the walk. We only had two nights in Paris, so the next day we made quick headway to the Louvre. Free if you're an EU citizen under 26, which is immensely awesome. To start off with, we tried to avoid the crowds as much as possible, looking at the sculpture and Napoleonic rooms and stuff like that. But eventually we bit the bullet and checked out the main areas, including you-know-who. There's something strange about so many people looking at screen images of an impression of a person who's been dead for hundreds of years. But I'm not man wise or poetic enough to say what it is. And we had some pretty considered artistic opinions on it too. What do you think of the Mona Lisa? It's a bit small, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I deleted the footage of us getting lost in the Louvre because that was embarrassing. The place is friggin' huge, come on. After our brains and cultural nibs had been tickled though, it was time for our hearts. Yes, Paris is indeed the city of metaphorical shackling commitment. This is our love, it is so strong. Please don't leave. So Richie, are you going to, uh, going to put one on there? Uh, well, I don't have one on me, unfortunately. Oh no. A bit awkward. Actually, little were we to know, this was not the first one of these bridges we were going to see. To be continued. There are so many sights we saw that day, such as Notre Dame Cathedral, which I misunderstood. I was, I was about to sing the Phantom of the Opera theme song, but that's um, not from Notre Dame. That's no. And the Pantheon. This is the Pantheon. It's quite well defined, despite it being friggin' massive. Which featured this interesting device, as explained by Richie. Okay, so this is uh, one of the things used by Galileo to prove that the Earth is rotating around an axis every 24 hours. So as um, the day progresses, uh, the pendulum will swing in different directions over time, and eventually it will cast out uh, all 24 hours uh, on this direction. Cool. And also this crypt which such luminaries as Victor Hugo, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and the Curies were interred in. This death tourism confuses me, but before I had time to think about it too much, there were parks and churches and obelisks to visit. It's an obelisk. And then my camera died. Yeah, um, not only has my camera run out of battery and I'm using my photo camera, but I just spent five minutes talking to this without it bloody recording. So that's good. The Eiffel Tower. We stayed there until night, watching it gradually get dark. To be honest, I needed the rest. We didn't have a lot of time our last morning in Paris, and we also had our huge freaking backpacks with us, so our excursions were limited to looking for churches, finding churches, stinks, <laughs> then actually finding the churches we wanted, in this case St Austin's. This is actually what we were looking for. Our final Paris site, Paris trademark, was the Arc de Triomphe. Again, like the Moulin Rouge, something that I feel people go and see to have seen it, rather than for its intrinsic value. I mean, sure, it's kind of cool, but look, it doesn't really like do much. It just sort of sits there. It's like it's like a gate to nowhere. Anyway, we had to go pretty soon, and as we wave goodbye to Paris from the awesome, lovely TGV, Tron Grand Velocité, roughly translating to Big Fast Train, I thought back to my dismissive attitude at the start of my time in Paris. If anything, I now feel like we could have stayed longer. There's so much we had to rush, and so much we still didn't have time to see, which I'm going to have to see another time. No matter how many times you visit somewhere, if you look hard enough, there'll always be something new. And even if there isn't, rediscovering a place with good friends in your own way is no bad thing, and new as well. It seemed like we'd already had quite a trip, but looking back, we had a hell of a long way to go. Next time, Nice!